Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Fraser, and in this video, I'm going to show how to make a module in C. By module, I simply mean a .h file and a .c file that encapsulate some functionality that your program is trying to produce. If this were C++, we'd be talking about a class, but in C, we tend to talk about modules as these sorts of um, groupings of functionality. Okay, so to begin with, I've got here a uh, fairly straightforward little program. Um, it's a standard C program. I've got a few functions. For example, times 2 does the obvious. You pass it an int, multiplies it by 2. I've got a function for squared that simply multiplies the number by itself. I've got this kind of funny function here as an example, even odd message. So you pass it in a number, and it passes you back a string. If your number is even, it says even. If it's odd, it passes back odd. It's just something different to do. And then down here, I've got my main, and I'm simply going to call each of these. So 5 times 2, I'm printing that out. I can do 3 squared, print that one out. And I can do is 42 odd or even. So let me build this. So save it, build it. And we can check out the answers here. And we see that they are all approximately what we'd hoped. So the first thing I want to show is a, a feature. When you start to work on multiple files, it can kind of get away from you with Eclipse. So one thing I might want to do here is, let's say I switch this to the number 50, uh, 10. And I don't save it, I just build. You note here that there's a little star up beside the name of the file, showing that the file has changes that have not yet been saved. If I check out what has been built, we see here that 5 times 2 is still 10, whereas in, now I'd actually asked for 10 times 2. So my changes were not saved before building. So I'm going to go and I'm going to save, tell Eclipse to always save changes before building. So under Window, Preferences, and then here I'm simply going to type in what I want. I want Save, and it reduces the list of things that I can possibly want. And in fact, under General and Workspace, there's this option, Automatically Save Before Build. Click OK on that, and then down at the bottom, click, or select it, and then click OK. And now, every time I hit Control B, it automatically saved my file for me. So that's the first thing to do. Next thing is, while I'm at that location, go back here into Window of Preferences, I'm going to change my formatting style. So I'm going to type in Style here, and then Code Style, and let's uh, allow me to see everything here under C. C++, there is a code style, expand that, formatter. I'm going to switch the formatter from the KNR actually isn't what I'm expecting. I'm expecting the BSD is actually the way I put my brackets. So just as another way to format your code. This is good in multiple files because you can have a lot more code floating around. Having them all formatted correctly is great. So we'll see that in a minute. So I hit OK here. I'll demonstrate what that did. We can see that I've got the bracket placement in the style I'm not aiming for. If we go to Source, and then Format, it will reformat my entire file into the format I'd asked for. Now, in fact, it's not quite what I'm hoping for anyway, so I'll maybe have to go back and tweak this again a little later on. And that's kind of what I was actually hoping for. Good enough. OK, so how do I make this into multiple files? Well, I'm going to create a, func a module here, and I'm going to call it MyMath. And I'm just going to pull out these functions here into the my math file. So let's start with that. I'm going to right click in the open area on the la or on the module. This is the project I'm calling it. And I'm going to select new file. And then I can type the file name. I'm going to call this one my math dot eight or dot C pardon me. Put it into the modules. So here's my math dot eight or dot C. I'm going to drag it onto the right hand side here so that I can see both files at once. Going back over to here, let's take the code I want. I'm going to Control X to cut, Control V to paste. Now, of course, if I build this, it's going to fail to build because it tries to build my code on the left, and it just gives me, you know, implicit declarations of everything. So, what I have to do here is I'm going to need to export from my math.h or math.c, pardon me, into let the rest of the world know what they can use. So I'm going to do that as a .h file. So new file, and I'm going to say I want this to be mymath.h. On the left is fine for the moment. Now, in a .h file, the usual structure here is I'm going to do a hash if and def mymath underscore h, hash define, 
my math underscore h. And at the end I put an end if. This is what's known as an include guard. What this does is this prevents this .h file from being multiply included into one .c file. This can be quite useful as you're compiling a larger project. Maybe it will fail to compile because you're doing duplicate def def uh, definitions of constants or something like this. So almost all .h files start with an include guard. Basically, this allows it to only be included once in a single dot or per .c file. Now, what do I want to put in here? Is I want to put prototypes of the functions. So my favorite way of doing that is I'll copy my .c file. I'll simply go through and delete the real code, leaving back, leaving behind all of the prototypes. Put a semicolon at the end of each line, and I'll save that. So now I've got mymouth.h. The next thing I want to do is I want to. I ha still hasn't changed anything. I now need to tell my main my main code that it can access these functions. So I do a hash include. And I'm going to put in bracket in quotes here my math.h. The difference between this is if you use the angle with less than greater than, these are built-in .h files coming with the compiler. If you use the quotes, that's telling the compiler that this is something I'm defining. Look in the current project to find them. So I'm going to hit Control B to build, and now we'll see what's going on here. So undefined reference to times two. So it now knows the function exists when it goes to compile it, but when it tries to link it, it says it can't, because undefined reference, the file, the function. Well, how do we do that? The issue here is going to be in my make file. So let me pull up my make file. What I've been doing so far is when I compile a file, I'm simply compiling that file on its own. And when I go to link the file, I'm simply linking it, its .o file. So for example, when I build main, I'm trying to link main.o and build the output of the main.exe or the main executable. Now in this case, I want to also build the mymath.c. So one way I can do that in my make file is uh, here put in mymath.o is a second file I wish to link and I'm going to depend on mymath.o. Now I've got this general rule here that's going to build all dot C files into .o files as required, and so that should cover me. I'll rebuild, and now it's running. So it now correctly executes my code. My code incidentally runs the actual main executable because my all target in my make file depends not only on main, but also my test. So I'm simply executing the code when I build. Okay, so that's a pretty good start. I now have Math dot, my math.c, my math.h describes it. One thing I should probably do here is put a comment in. So some custom uh, math functions. Great idea to put a comment at the top of each of your file. Hopefully your functions are named so clearly you don't need to comment them, but your file should have a great name to it. OK, so let's look at another thing we can do is we can start to export some predefined things. So I can do a hash define in here. And if I do hash define, let's do pi. And we're going to hash define pi to be 3.1415. Eh, good enough approximation to start with. So now when I go back into my main, I can now begin to use what pi is. Printf pi equals percent f, because it's a floating point. And this is just going to be pi. Build that, and it comes out fine. So we can ask, well, why did I need this um, include guard? The name of this include guard I simply put as my math underscore h because that's the file it's in. I just came up with this on the fly. I could name it anything I like. As long as these two lines match exactly, that's all you need. And you want it to be something unique so that not everybody else is using it. Now why did I need that? Well, let's imagine that I happen to somehow include this twice. This is kind of an obvious error here, but sometimes one .h file will include another, which is including another, and a whole bunch of others, so it can be quite easy to get multiple includes. So here, if I try and build, it's not a problem, because my include guard has caught that. If I now get rid of my include guard, 
and I try to build. Uh, let's see here. Um, sometimes, incidentally, it's not going to know to rebuild because when you change the .h file, your make file isn't smart enough, at least mine isn't, to track the dependencies on .h files. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do force it clean here. So I'm going to go to project, clean, and it's going to clean everything. And now I'm going to build, oh, it actually came out okay. Got the multiple includes. Um, yeah, okay. Well, in some cases, you might see something like a, uh, a redeclaration or redefinition of a function, of a, uh, of a constant, and so forth. And that probably means you forgot your include guard. My example at the moment isn't triggering that, but that's okay. Okay, so let me do that clean again, having changed my .h file. Again, anytime you change your .h file, you may need to do a make clean in order for it to catch up to you. So, a couple other things when I start to work with modules. The naming here is not bad, but in a larger project, it can be kind of confusing as to track down where this code actually is. Of course, Eclipse doesn't get confused. I can go into main, I can hit, hold down control, I can click on anything, and it'll take me to the definition. So over here, it shows me exactly where that function's implemented. In a larger project, that can be a little bit confusing when you're just trying to read the code. So one thing we'd often do is we'd name all functions in a module starting with a prefix. So the convention I might use, I'm going to go Alt-Shift-R here to rename, and I'm going to call this my math underscore. And what happens is Eclipse is smart enough to rename it everywhere. So rename it here, in the .c file, and in my main.c. So here is my math underscore times two. This can be helpful if you've got, for example, a queue and a list, both of which want to have an insert function. You don't have to come up with arbitrarily complex names. You could simply call one list underscore insert and the other one q underscore insert. So let's do the same thing here. I can rename it anywhere in my code. My math underscore squared. And I'll do the last one here. My oops. My math underscore. And let's do this for pi as well. You might think everyone's got the same definition of pi, but how many digits did they use? We don't know. So I'm gonna do my math underscore just because it's a constant, I'm going to make it all constant caps there. So that makes it a little bit clearer, sort of the naming that I'm going to stick to. Now, one interesting fact in C is a standard function can be called anywhere. So let's imagine that in here, I had a thing, let's say, uh, I'm going to create some code, so something like uh, get, the next get the next even integer. It'll simply give us into even integers. So int get next even int and I'm going to uh, int next even equals zero, we'll start at zero and we're going to say next even uh, plus equals two. That'll be okay for the moment. Return next even. Looking good. Now, in fact, this isn't really the next even. This is going to be my last even. So let's give it a name that actually means something. So the last even number was 0. Next one we're going to get is 2. Sounds great. And then in a loop, for example, I could over here, 4 int i equals 0, i less than, th yeah, let's do 3, i plus plus, and printf even percent d, and we're going to get get next e even int. Now, of course, if I try and compile this, it's going to tell me an error here. It doesn't know what that is. I don't know what that function is. Now, one thing that someone could do is they can put in the prototypes and allow them to call anything. So you say, well, I know I want to call get next even int. I'll put the prototype in here. Now when I run it, it's perfectly happy. Here are my even ints. You can say, well, that's not in the .h file. That's not part of what I wanted to expose. So if I wanted this to be private, I'd have to do something different. So the trick here is you can make something static. You make a method static, and all of a sudden, now in this case, it's not going to build this because it knows it's never called. Let me just put something in here. 
int do it and return get next even. This is just to uh, get around compiling errors uh, in here. So rebuild that. So now I'm actually using this function so the error that I was seeing um, about it not being used it goes away. <clears throat> but here it is unable to access this function because I made it static. So when you make something static, so make static to prevent outside access. This is actually called making it internally linked, so giving it internal linkage. Normal functions have external linkage, which means they can be accessed from other modules or other piece, ever the other .c files. But when you make it an internally linked method, it can only be accessed from inside that .c file. So I make this static so that nobody else can access it. Now, you can do the same sort of thing here with integers. So I can say, well, instead I'm going to use now, uh, let's comment this out because I don't need it. I can access that last even that's sitting in some other place. How do I do that? I need an extern. So I say extern last even. I make it, it's going to be an int. And this simply says, hey, someone else has something that I want to access. So printf uh, last even percent d. Oops. And now when I compile and run, it's perfectly happy. Because this variable here is global, and it also has external linkage. So that means that anybody can gain access to it. So what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to correctly encapsulate things. I only want this variable to be accessible from inside my mymath.c class, or my, pardon me, my mymath.c module. So in this case, I'm going to make this static. A static global variable has internal linkage, meaning it can only be accessed from inside the .c file. Now when I try and compile, I get an error, undefined reference to last even, which means that not even this extern allowed me to gain access to it. So this extern had no, in, no, um, no effect. I'll show you what extern does normally. If I get rid of the static here on my global, and I get rid of the extern, if I try and compile, it says undefined reference to this. Yeah, undeclared variable. So it didn't know what this was. But me saying extern says basically, well, dear linker, you'll find this variable in somebody else's code inside this project. It makes it happy, but of course I want it to be uh, internal linkage, so I make this static. As a general rule, all functions that you list in your .h file should not be static. In fact, they can't. You don't want them static because you want somebody else to call them. But all functions that you do not list in your .h file should be static so that nobody else can gain access. You're basically making it private. You're encapsulating it with inside of your module. And almost always, I'm going to put this up at the top here, almost always you're going to want your global variables to be static so that nobody can access them. If for some reason somebody did need access to this value, I would write a function that would return the value. And one last thing here is very often I'm going to want to, for example, access pi inside my mymath.c. So I'm going to hash include in quotes mymath.h and so that, I spelled that wrong probably, so that I can begin to use things like pi inside of this function, inside of this uh, um, module. Okay. That's all I wanted to show about modules. Thank you very much.